Hey folks, uh, Mr. Math Blog here. I hope you guys are doing well and your teacher is treating you well. Um, this, this lesson is called Modeling Factors of Numbers. And so for uh, the Common Core Standards, that's what our new goal is, is Common Core. Uh, this is the beginning of operations in algebra uh, by becoming familiar with factors and multiples of numbers. So we're going to uh, use some tiles here, some models to find some factors. And, and this goes along with Lesson 5.1 in your textbook, okay? All right, so a factor is a number multiplied by another number that gives a product, okay? And you're thinking, what does that mean? Well, you know, think of, uh, you know, two numbers that you multiply that gets you a bigger number. Well, those two numbers that you multiplied would be called the factors, and I have examples of that, okay? Every whole number that's greater than one has at least uh, two factors, you guys, one in itself. So, for example, seven is one times seven. So one and seven would be factors of seven. Okay, some numbers have many factors, and I'll have to show you some examples. I bet you can think of some. Here's some examples right here. Let me uh, scroll this over just a little bit right here. All right, so uh, I'll just get rid of this box right here. So uh, 16, factors of 16. 1 times 16 equals 16, so 1 and 16 are factors. And same with 11, 11 times 1. Uh, those are factors of 11. 236, factors of 236 are 1 and 236. Now, I know you can probably think of other factors that go into 16, and that's terrific. We'll talk about that in just a second. There's all kinds of factors here, I think. I don't know. Uh, it would take a while to break that down. But uh, many numbers can be broken into factors um, uh, in lots of different ways. So, for example, 24, you guys. 24 is uh, 1 times 24, so 1 and 24 are factors. 24 is also equal to 2 times 12, so 2 and 12 are factors of 24. 3 and 8 are also factors of 24, because 3 times 8 equals 24, and so does 4 times 6. So those are all factors of 24. Okay? So here, we're going to have uh, use the, the square tiles to model and record factors of 20. Okay? So uh, what we're going to do is use all 20 tiles uh, and make uh, as many different arrays as you can. Okay? And record uh, the arrays. Whoops, there should, oops, I got an email there record uh, the arrays. Let me fix this. This should be the... I'm at school right now. I'm on my prep period. So uh, anyway, I teach high school math uh, up in Sacramento. All right, so we're going to record all the arrays uh, in grids of 20 right here, 20 tiles, and we're going to write the factor models. Okay, so can you think of numbers? What times what equals 20? Well, here's one, you guys. This is probably the most common one. 4 times 5 equals 20. So here's four rows going down, and here's five columns going here, and there's 20 tiles in there. If I counted these up, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and then 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So there's 20 tiles in here, and it's 4 by 5. So, so 4 and 5 are factors of 20. So what other uh, tiles can you arrange? So what times what equals 20? Okay, hopefully you can see that 2 times 10, 2 rows times 10 columns equals 20. There's 20 squares in this one also. So 2 and 10 are factors of 20, okay? I know a lot of you guys are thinking this. And then, and then 1 times 20, uh, 1 row of 20 columns. Uh, that also equals 20. There's 20 tiles in there. So 1 and 20 are factors of 20. So all the factors listed in order, if I listed them from smallest to biggest, would be this 1, then this 2, then these 4 and 5, and then 10, and then 20. So there's all the factors of 20 right there. Okay? All right, what else do we have here? Oh, um, this is how I remember. One of my students told me this, how to remember the difference between columns and rows. In a Colosseum, you guys, Colosseums have these columns that go up and down that hold up the Colosseum. So columns go up and down, and rows go left and right. So like this sidewalk right here would be a row right here, and the columns that go up and down are columns. Okay, that's how I remember. All right. All right. So use the arrays here to name the factors of 12. Okay. So there's 12 tiles here. This is going to be 1 times 12 equals 12. That's what will go right here. Okay. You guys with me? All right. And then this one's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4 times 3. 4 times 3 also equals 12. And by golly, there's 12 little tiles right there. And then this one's going to be 2 by 6. Okay. 2 by 6. All right. And then let's try one more. Okay. No, let's try a couple more here. I'm sorry, I got you all all excited about being being done. I know you appreciate these math lessons. Everybody loves math, don't you? 
<laughs> just kidding. All right, so uh, below is an array of 36 tiles. Okay, so here's 36 tiles. One, two, three, four by nine. Four by nine gets me 36. So can you arrange the tiles in another way to show the same factors? Okay, and draw a quick picture and explain. Okay, so, so it says uh, to show the same factors. So I know there's other things. I know you're probably thinking six times six, but those aren't the same factors as four and nine. Here I'm using four and nine as, as factors of 36. Okay, so so uh, four times nine equals 36. I know that, you guys. So, but look, you guys. So does nine times four, and that's it. We just did it. We just arranged it in another order, showing the same factors. Four and nine is is equal to 36, and so is nine times four. So there's there it is arranged in a different way. Nine times four is the same as four times nine. Okay, so I think we answered that one right there. All right, and then here's the last one here. Uh, Bob has to set up 90 chairs in equal rows. Um, for a unicycle training class, uh, but there's not room for more than 20 rows. So what are the possible numbers of rows that Bob could set up? Okay, so, so his maximum amount of people in a row is 20. So here's a grid where there's 20 rows right here, and we're going to use this grid to show the possible factors of 90, okay? And it said they had to be in equal rows. So you couldn't have like, you know, one row with only one person in it. They had to have the same amount of people in each row. So it's it's basically we're going to draw some rectangles here. So so we know 1 times 90 equals 90, but what's the matter with this picture right here? Okay, I can't use this one right here because 90 is over 20, and it says uh, there's not enough room for more than 20 rows. So I can't have, you know, one... Um, uh, one column with 90 rows on it because uh, it can't be more than 20. So I can't have numbers more than 20 basically. Now 2 times 45 also equals 90 but that 45 takes us out of the picture right there. Alright 3 goes into 90. Don't you guys know 3 times 30? 3 times 30 equals 90 but, but that's not going to work either because that's over 20. 30 is over 20 but it's getting closer isn't it? Okay it's getting closer. Let's see 4. 4 doesn't go into, I know 4 goes into 80. 4 goes into 84, 4 goes into 88, nah, it doesn't go into 90, 4 goes into 92, okay? All right, hey, there's Mrs. Peralta right there, an email from her. All right, so 4 goes into, uh, uh, doesn't go into 90, but 5 does, and look, there's a number that's less than 20, so I can use that guy right there. So so there's one possible rule. Here's, here's uh, uh, and I did it by columns, here's 5 columns by uh, 18 rows right here. And if you counted all those up, there'd be 90 uh, seats in there, okay? So that'll work. Six goes into 90 also, six times 15, so that'll work. Seven doesn't, eight doesn't. Ooh, nine times 10, that'll work also. All right, so I think I'm done with factors of 90, you guys. And so we had to pick the ones that had numbers less than uh, 20 in there. So let's answer this. So what are the possible number of rows that Bob could set up? So Bob can do rows of five by 18 or six by 15 or nine by 10. Okay, I hope this helps you guys. And if it does and you're at home, go ahead and please click like. That would please me, okay? Take care, everybody.